See, belief means just this. I believe in this or that means. I don't know, but I'm bullying you. Why can't I say I don't know? What's the problem? I do not know is a tremendous possibility in human life. If you see I do not know, naturally the longing to know will come. Seeking will come. The possibility of knowing will come. Whatever I do not know, I believe. That means you will never know, you will just go on with your own stuff. So this is why believers always need a flock. But the moment you become a seeker, you become alone. Because if you are the only person who believes something on this planet that nobody else believes, you will feel like a bloody fool. You need twenty-five people around you who believe the same thing. Now you say, eh! <laughs> All kinds of rubbish. But <laughs> when once twenty-five people gather around you and all of you believe the same thing, boo! Confidence without clarity will come. Confidence without clarity is a great disaster that has unfolded upon humanity. It's mainly because of belief systems, mainly because people have become unwilling to see what I do not know, I do not know, what is the problem? So, uh, in the yogic culture, we evolved a method. We always identify with our ignorance, never with our knowledge. Because in this cosmos, nobody knows where it begins, where it ends. It's a… in our perception at least, it's a limitless space. In this space, even if you grind all the libraries on the planet and pour it into your head, still what you know is just a speck in the universe. If you identify with that speck, you will become that speck. Because whatever you identify, you become that, isn't it? But our ignorance is boundless. If you identify with your ignorance, you will become boundless. So, what I am doing is not because of my confidence, because of clarity. I don't have any clarity. <laughs> I just know what I want and I see it and I consume it. But I don't look at it from a clarity perspective, I don't look at it from a educational perspective, I just know it has, I have to have that in order to establish my life the way I would want it to be. I just don't have no understanding of it, I just know it has to be possessed by me in order to function the way I would like to function. See, uh, clarity is on de various different levels. Well, you've been in a sport where if you did not see things clearly, you were down, licking your own sweat and blood. There was clarity, otherwise it wouldn't work. The clarity of why I'm existing, not the clarity of why I'm fighting, fighting as a child. No, no, I, I'm oh. just saying, clarity is at different levels. Yeah, exactly. I'm saying any sport for that matter, without clarity you wouldn't be able to function. So, without clarity there is no successful action in anything. Now, uh, if we are talking about clarity about life itself, have you paid attention to life first of all? First of all, where is life? These days, if somebody says, my life, you will have to sieve through many things. They may be talking about their dog. They may be talking about their husband and wife. They may be talking about their children. They may be talking about their career. They may be talking about their wealth. They may be talking about their car. We don't know whether they may be talking about their property, their home. We don't know what they're talking about when they say, my life. So let me make this very clear. You have a body, you have a thought process and emotion. But to have all this, fundamentally you're alive, isn't it? You're alive with many accessories. But right now the accessories have become larger than the life itself. 
Once the accessories become more important or significant than life, then of course everything is topsy-turvy if you have to walk on your head. It's difficult of course, because that's not the way life is designed. If you were designed to walk on your head, it would be okay. But you're not designed to walk on your head, you're trying to walk on your head, it's hard. If something happens, people suffer. If nothing happens, they will suffer. If they are poor, they suffer their poverty. You make them rich, they'll suffer the taxes. They are not educated, they suffer that. Put them to school, endless suffering. Not married, they will suffer that. Get them married. <laughs> I did not say anything. Just tell me one aspect of life that human beings are not suffering. They are suffering every aspect. So offer them death, that will also they will suffer. So suffering is not because of the nature of life. Suffering is because of the complexity of the mind which you did not care to understand. If you had the brain of an earthworm, you would be fine. Hello? Peaceful, eco-friendly also, because that's a great aspiration in California. <laughs> the only life which is struggling to be eco-friendly is brilliant. <laughs> Earthworm knows, a grasshopper knows, a lizard and a snake knows how to be eco-friendly. This most evolved creature on the planet is struggling to be eco-friendly. Yes or no? So, uh, the problem is complexity of possibilities. Possibilities are the greatest blessing we have, but unfortunately that's what we are suffering because when something very possible and powerful is given to you, if you don't handle it right, it'll blow up in your face. That's all that's happening.